Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and if you've been around here for any stretch of time, you would know that I really enjoy 3D printing. But you know what? The thing that's always been my biggest blind spot, my biggest weak point when it comes to 3D printing is design, because I know how to print things, but I don't know how to make things for myself. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, most people fall into that exact same category. We go online and we depend on the creative mastery and genius of other people to create these files, put them online for us to find. And then we go, oh, that looks pretty neat. And we print it out for ourselves. But what happens when you need something that's so specific, you can't find it anywhere else and you're forced to rely on yourself to either make it or just forget about it. Well, that happened to me recently and fortunately I was able to do something about it. So if you are just deftly afraid of trying to design anything for yourself, I'm going to tell you in this video, at least give it a try because if it can work for me, it can work for anyone and I mean anyone. Trust me. So first, a little bit of backstory. So I recently reviewed the Hey Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS Resin 3D Printer. And when I was looking at other videos that people made about it, I came across a really nice video by Once in a Six Side. And in that video, he brought back a model that was believed to be long lost on the internet. It is of a amazing ship design from the universe of Warhammer 40k, which is called Girly Man's Glorious Rowboat. And if you know, you know, but it's a silly name because the people who create these models that are very similar to what you will find in the Warhammer 40k universe need to call it strange things to avoid as best they can the litigation arm of Games Workshop who fiercely protect their IP and likeness and a lot of these models just get taken down under legal threats. And this model was taken down some time ago. I don't know why. I don't know if the creator just decided he didn't want to have it up anymore or if the Games Workshop lawyers paid him a visit or if they were afraid that they were going to get paid a visit. I don't know. But somehow once in a six side managed to get a hold of these files in a very compassionate way and was kind enough to redistribute it to the community, this file that was seemingly long lost. And I don't know how long this is going to last, so I made sure that I grabbed it and I printed it out. Now, the other thing in the video that he made about it is that he could not get the original base that came with it. So he made his own base. And I think he's pretty good when it comes to designing stuff like that, because I've used one of his designs before. It's the wash basket that I currently use in the Ultra Reflexes wash station. But when it comes to this ship, maybe I didn't see it, but I don't think he uploaded the stand that he created for it. Maybe he did and I missed it, but I don't know. But because there was no stand for it, the ship was just sitting on my table, kind of lopsided. So at that point, I thought if I want this ship to float in the air, I'm going to need to try to make a stand for it myself. I don't have any experience when it comes to design or CAD or anything like that. I like to say that I'm the type of person who can't draw a straight line with a ruler. And I am serious about that. I don't know what the problem is, but I want it to really have this stand. So I decided to give it a shot. All right. So I looked at the bottom of the ship and I saw that there is a hole there. And I was like, well, I guess I need something to stick in this hole. So I need to know how wide is this hole? So I grabbed a little ruler that's on the table that my uh, daughter uses for school type stuff. And I just kind of measured it out roughly and it was all scratched up. And I was like, well, this looks like four notches on the inches side. So I went to Tinkercad, which is a free online tool that you can use to, you know, model some 3D stuff. And I logged into that. And since by default, they use millimeters. So I went to Google and I said, Google, what is 
a quarter of an inch in millimeters. And it told me about 6.35 millimeters. So I just went on the side of the panel where they have all of these basic shapes and I just drug one in that looks like a cylinder. And I knew that if I just clicked on it, it would give me these boxes for measurements. And since I knew that 6.35 would be a good place to start, I just typed in 6.35 and it made that cylinder very small to that size. So there you go. I had my very first designed 3D print. So I took it over to Bamboo Studio, I sliced it, and I printed it out on the Bamboo Lab A1. I made it kind of small, I just wanted to see if it would fit, and I took it over to the ship, and I stuck it in that hole, and lo and behold, it fit. And it wasn't a really super tight fit, and it wasn't a really super loose fit. It was in there very nicely. And I thought, I can't believe I got that measurement right. This is crazy. So, okay, I got the size for the stick part of it, but I still need a base. So I went back to Tinkercad and I looked for a shape that I thought would be suitable for a, ba for a base. And I came across this hexagon looking shape, brought that onto the platform, and I knew that I need to make a hole that's the same size as the stick that I made. So 6.35 millimeters. So I took the base and I stretched it out, made it pretty big. And then I looked up, how do you make a hole in Tinkercad? And after a little bit of trial and error and not being able to quite understand immediately why the videos people were making, they were making holes easily, but I couldn't make the hole. And it was because I didn't realize I needed to actually take the cylinder piece and push it through the base piece and then do the procedures to make the hole actually appear. But I managed to do that. So with my new off center hold base, I brought that into Bamboo Studio and I sliced that. And then when that was done, I wanted to see if the little dowel piece will fit into the hole on the base and it did. And it was a pretty tight fit. I had to force it just a little bit but it was holding nice and tight. And I thought, I did it. I finally have my base. So I went to put the ship on the base and well, it didn't work because there's so much stuff on the bottom of the ship. The little dowel was just too short. It needed to be longer in order to avoid running into the other intricacy, intricacies of that ship. So I grabbed that old red ruler again, and I measured from the base to where that hole is roughly, and it was around three inches. So I went back to Bamboo Studio, I went to the scale setting, and I turned off the uniform adjustment, and then I changed the Z height to be whatever three inches is in centimeters. So I think it's somewhere around like 76 or 77 millimeters, and it made a long stick. And I went off and I printed that. I stuck it down in that base, which by the way, the base is kind of flimsy because when I printed it, I didn't want to make it too like tall because I didn't know if it was going to fit. So I just wanted to keep it thin, but I was impatient at this point. So I stuck it down in there. It fit. I put the ship on there and it worked kind of. But because the base was so thin and because there's a lot of junk in the trunk on the ship, it was kind of just leaning back a little bit. But not to be deterred, I grabbed my super glue and my accelerant and I made sure that that dowel was nicely acceleratedly glued into that base. I put the ship back down on it and now the ship has a little bit of a lean, just a little bit, like it's you know in space going this way, but the base is still flat on the ground and there she sits. Girly man's glorious rowboat with a 3D printed and designed base by me. And I can do it even better because I know I can make that base thicker, make it more sturdy, and it's just very satisfying to know that there was a problem that I had and I solved it with 3D printing. Now, granted, Wooden dowels aren't hard to find. In fact, I could go to Walmart right now and get a quarter inch diameter wooden dowel for about 78 cents. And it's a long wooden dowel, but I got a power drill and like a little tiny saw bit that I can put in the power drill and I could easily cut it to be the length that I want. But they didn't solve the problem of the base, which is something that would be, I think, harder to find. 
a base that has a quarter inch hole in it, that seems a little, you know, unique, specialty, very specific to a specific situation. And 3D printing managed to solve that issue for me. So I'm still no designer, but I am still extremely happy that I was able for the first time ever to take a design that was roughly in my head to solve a problem that I have and I managed to do it. And I hope that it serves as inspiration for anyone out there that might be looking at this, might be intimidated by this kind of thing. I'm still super intimidated by it, but just give it a shot. You never know. You put a couple of shapes together and make something whole new, make a whole new shape. And then it just kind of goes from there. So yeah, that's it. I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, yeah, it's one of the things I love about 3D printing, solving a practical problem. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves. Speak to you soon.